this video is about the day I went up to Retro Truck Show, which was absolutely fantastic and one of the best shows I've been to. I went up with my mum, dad, Ryan and my friend Jack. I also tried out a new microphone and I didn't quite get the hang of it most of the time. I worked it out in the end, but some of the audio was lost. But hopefully I've got enough to give you a good insight into what Retro Truck Show was like. And I'd like to show you some of the really cool, interesting stuff that I've seen there. As we walk down through, one of the first things that Dad spots is this Volvo F88 that looks absolutely immaculate. And by the sounds of it, it's been one of the most talked about trucks of the show. The paintwork and detail on it is just absolutely stunning and really stands out. I am already getting a different vibe from this truck show than I do from any other truck show in the UK. The atmosphere is a totally different class and it really is all about the trucks and the unique taste of lifelong truck lovers. Each truck we walk past is different from the next, unlike most shows where you get a row of the same truck in the same colours. Then Dad spots an AEC Mammoth Major. So they used to do one of these with a V8 in it. They used to get hot, put a thing enough radiator in it. Ah. The time they sorted it all out, they just pulled down the pan. So that cab was used on last. Like we had a breakdown truck with eight wheel with this this cab. Have you seen the inside? <laughs> that big black thing in the middle, that was your heater, because that's the engine, you know? Oh. <laughs> Done a few miles in one of these. It's incredible, that is. I can't believe how immaculate a lot of these trucks are, considering they're so old. Clearly, a lot of time and effort has gone into these trucks to restore them to what they were originally. And I think next time I go to something like this, I'm going to have to put a mic on my dad, as I kept missing a lot of what he was saying, unless that was his plan. That's your cab tail, yeah, you take that box out, put tape on you, and then you start to take the seat off, so some of them. Get off. What would this be, like, late 60s? Then we come across Darren Griffin's teacup, which Mark and Stuart Jennings kindly show us round. Darren had an unfortunate injury while he was out trucking, which put him in a wheelchair, but that wasn't going to stop him getting behind the wheel of a truck. That's the full stop and the front one. So you accelerate yeah. and then you brake. And then you've got an electric button on the gear stick, which that does your clutch operation, which is a motor under the seat and it pulls your clutch in and out. And then if you see over the other side where the pillow is, he's got a crane and a hoist, which we, he lifts himself in and over that side and comes in and then wheels himself over and he gets himself in the seat. Have you driven it? Yeah. So you can drive it as a normal person. Oh, can you? Yeah. Have you tried driving it like how he drives it? Is yeah. it hard? Yeah, you, when you're going to brake, your arm, you think, oh, that's breaking, but you've got to go past it because your oh, legs right. are stronger. Oh. The interior has been done out in matching brown and cream and has been modified for Darren's specifications. This is a left-hand drive truck and the hoist is on the right-hand side behind the passenger seat. I really love this dash and you can see that it would just be such a lovely vehicle to drive. And then we get shown how the hoist works from the other side. With this particular hoist, Darren needs somebody with him to help him in and out of the cab. One thing that I did notice is that there are no marks on the paintwork or the interior from hoisting Darren in and out of the cab. Clearly, Darren has a lot of good, careful people around him. I was lucky enough to meet Darren briefly and his passion for trucking certainly shone free. Yeah, there, on his back. Yeah. On his chair. We 
carry on walking and we come across some very well-known trucks, but no one seems to be about, until we walk around the corner and we see Martin Hardin. You all right? Yeah, you? Yeah. Are you in um, the tea cab again now, are you? Yeah, I, keep, I don't have a wave to you this week. I know, I've seen you. You just got there. <laughs> <laughs> I get a good video of him leaving the truck show in the tea cab, which appears later on this video. I always love seeing this Only Fools and Horses truck going up and down the motorway, and luckily I always get a flash and away from him. Jacko thought that Bibbs was asleep because his curtains were shut, but he wasn't. He was stood at the side of the truck having a chat. Oh, hello. <laughs> All right. How are you doing? <laughs> Unfortunately, this is where my mic went a bit wrong, but these chaps were showing me a video of when they seen me on the motorway the other week. They also showed me the trucks that they had bought to the show, including this stunning example of a 142. They even have boards at the back of the truck explaining the history of this truck. And the lad told me that this is the original interior of the truck, which has been kept in an incredibly good condition. There is even an embossed horse on the door panel. One thing I absolutely love seeing is hand-painted sign writing. I followed a girl on Instagram for years called Tiffany Miliband, who does all sorts of bespoke hand-painted sign writing, and I'm always in awe of what she does. I'd like to think that one day I'd have enough time to have a go myself. As I'm walking round, young truck sporter Alfie Simcox comes up and surprises me. Unfortunately, this is one of the occasions where I got the mic wrong. And unfortunately, you can't hear me ask Alfie what his favourite part of the show was. He did say he was really pleased to see the Coles Customs Vendetta. And he's got some really cool photos of trucks around the show. When I catch up with everyone else, Ryan has found the bar that he's been looking for all morning. And with that, it absolutely emptied down, so we got in under the tent for a while, until it cleared. And as soon as it did, we were back out walking around the trucks again. It's so nice to see so much variety and so many different styles. This show is not very far from the yard of Coles and Sons, and we are really pleased to see a good turnout from them. All of the Coles Customs lorries are customised, styled, and painted differently. However, they all seem to complement each other perfectly, and you can almost tell that they were designed by the same eyes. Everyone seems to have their own favourite Coles truck, and you would have thought mine would be the Centurion, as yellow is my favourite colour. And as much as I really love that truck, it's not my favourite. In fact, my favourite is on the other end. Dan's Mexicano truck is themed on the Day of the Dead, which is also a popular Bridgewater Carnival theme. Then there is Vendetta, which is Elfie's favourite. And on the trailer behind is their 770 limited edition Flying Griffin. It's actually this one that is my favourite, down next to Ryan Goritz of DNF Super Cranes and Richard Ferns, driven by Nathan Gill. I think the reason that this Coles truck is my favourite is just because it's so classic. It's got an old school vibe on a very new truck and is very simple but with a huge attention to detail. And I think it's styled in a way that will just never go out of fashion. Where are you going? Down, down that I don't know whether to get... Is there much up there? <laughs> what we can look at or are we better off going that way and down? <laughs> <laughs> so this is the same make and model of truck that pulls our carnival car in Bridgewater in November. Although ours is a H reg and it looks a lot different than this as it has been modified to make it into a carnival car and to be part of the famous Bridgewater circuit that you may have seen on some of my really early videos. On ours, the cab has been taken off and the seat has been moved to the middle. Although the gear stick and the handbrake have stayed in the same place, so effectively it's like driving a left-hand drive. We also pulled two trailers with ours, which totals 100 foot long and it's also 16 foot high and 11 foot wide, so it's definitely a totally different look to the original Ford Cargo. Then I come across this ERF, which I recognised from an article that I read a couple of months ago. It was bought by a 27 year old first time owner driver. It worked on fairgrounds for all but a year of its life and therefore had never had an MOT because it's exempt until now. 
Luckily, the lad is a qualified HGV mechanic, so he was able to get it up and running to be a working truck again. And because it had spent all of its time on fairgrounds, it had really low mileage for the age of the truck. The Carnival Club also had a 4x2 just like this, of the same age, make and model, to pull the generator between carnivals, and it was a fantastic truck to drive. It's a shame the lad wasn't about when we were walking around to have a chat with him. Yeah, we we'll walk down. We we'll walk down. Yeah. Was it? Is that a dodge? The one with the nose sticking out. No, Ah. Do you want to walk down and have a look or no? No, that's all right. I've seen it. You used to have um, cold starts on the floor. Yeah. It rang very fun. If you was going up there, you'd pull it out. You couldn't see behind it, but you'd get up to the The engine out of them just goes straight in the forge and major track. Oh, right. Get yeah, no. on. So that's what we've done with the carnival one. The forward seats was just getting rid of it when I started working. Oh, right. and I think this is a really good show. <laughs> yeah. I'm really glad I come. Are you happy you saw your favourite Coles one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks good, doesn't it? It does look really good. I was told that this cab that they are lifting on the truck now is used at truck shows as their accommodation. Then we come across the Templeton and Daughter Scania 143 450. This is just a phenomenal piece of artwork and the attention to detail is incredible. You have to see it in real life to believe it and this truck still goes out and does a day's work. Mum went off and looked round the stores on her own, so we met her back at the bar, and we found Martin Hardin sweet-talking her. I know where she gets walks from now. <laughs> <laughs> By this point, everyone was getting ready to leave, but there were still a few people that I hadn't caught up with yet. I think one of the best bits of the show is actually seeing all the trucks leave, and hearing the sound of the engines. It's just something that you don't see day-to-day -day on British roads, and it never sounds as good on a video as it does in real life. My Ryan isn't massively into trucks, but he's happy to come along to truck shows as long as there's a bar. Yeah, what are you saying?
And then I spot somebody I know. Yeah? Hello. Ah, oh, Gemma! <laughs> you alright? How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. thank you. Let's get some content. <laughs> well, I'm trying out this new um, microphone. Is it working? I don't know. I have no idea. <clears throat> I'll find out when I download it. You might have seen Nipper on his own channel. Yes. Previously on Tracker Tim. Yes. Now flying my own flag for yes, content. Yes, you are. Old school rules. Just do yourself. Ryan. No, Ryan's here Ryan. and Where's Jack, Ryan? Jack is my bodyguard. Oh yeah, you need that. Some nice fucks in it. Oh, lovely. Love this. Did you see any ERS Gemma? Oh, I've seen loads. Yeah. Actually, I need an ERS sticker, Gemma. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Y
As I'm leaving, I get a shout from somebody that I came across through Truck and Driver magazine and being on their podcast. And I met him out on the Scania trip in Norway that I did in January. Yes, yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, how are you going? Yeah, good. Things, how are you? Yeah, good. I saw, I saw you up there. Yeah, you were talking to Nipper at the time. Yeah. What? Yeah, you bought this one? That's mine and, uh, and that white FA15 is mine as well. Ah, uh, right. No way. Yeah, so, yeah. No way. I wasn't even expecting you to be here. No, you... no. I'm only, I only came home for just for the show. I'm only home for three weeks. Like, right. It's a fucking bad addiction, you That's know. A... Well, it probably is, yeah. <laughs> Work went a little bit quiet and I just asked him what he mind if it went away and he said no. But I'm, I'm, I'm flying back on Wednesday. Right. Yeah, so. I only read that article lately, actually, because I, I only came home and um, got all the magazines that I missed, you know? Right. When you're a truck and driver, so yeah, it's really, yeah. we came across good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, to be fair, when Dougie sent it to me, I um, I messaged him back, I said I nearly cried at that. Ah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's good. No, it, was, yeah. it was nicely written and, you know, you, yeah, and really you came nice. across. Yeah, really nice, yeah. So what have you been up to lately? Where have you been interested in? So, uh, so I went, I went back to Australia in April. Yeah. And been driving out there, like all over Western Australia, Kimberley, Outback, and uh, then yeah, so I only came back here for three weeks, and I'm going back again now out to Australia, do a few more months oh, out right. there, and then maybe, maybe then go to New Zealand, do a bit of driving out there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Just keep moving anyway. Yeah. Stay in the one place. You've got a, an amazing life. Yeah, doing yeah. All that. yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah. Because you never told me what your YouTube channel was. Sorry. You're, yeah, it's 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 you're, just. Um, just, it's just stuff I'm interested in. If you like shows like this, you'll really like Paul's videos. He does everything from driving in Europe to Australia and New Zealand, and he also has a passion for tractors. Went out to Sydney for the first time this year. Oh, oh yes. my god, that's supposed that. to be really good as well. Yeah. It's laid back atmosphere, which I didn't yeah. realise it was. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I like. It's like where it's just chilled out, laid back. No, like yeah. everyone's there no for the same arms, thing, and no yeah. Shit music and all that. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Well, it must be getting old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something you know, like that. Uh, um, there's a guy, you know, our Tim. You ever seen him? He's on YouTube. No. Yeah, so anyway, he's no. on YouTube. Our Tim, but he did a. He's doing a little video later, but he, I did an interview with him, with him down there. But he had yes. cameras set up and like oh, tripods right. and yeah, so interesting. To see yeah. That. I did find our Tim's channel, and his video of the retro truck show is far better than mine. His video quality and editing is excellent, and hopefully, I'll get to meet him one day for some tips. I will add the link to both these channels in the description. My parents and Ryan are up there waiting for me. Okay, so. you go ahead. Nice to see you anyway. Yeah, yeah. and you. Yes, yeah. All the best. Cheers. Is this going on the YouTube? Yeah. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed our day out at Retro Truck Show. 